Armageddon Part 5, the end, the finale of the crossover event. It happened. Here we are. It was a weird episode. I'm going to talk full spoilers though. So if you haven't watched the episode yet, don't watch this video. But I had really mixed feelings about this episode. I feel like it was just a very odd finale. We'll get into details of that. I think there were three specific things they were focusing on in this episode. And then there's like a couple things here and there that were just kind of sprinkled in there. I guess it's filler. I don't know. But to me, this was kind of an underwhelming finale. There were some cool parts, don't get me wrong. But when I think about where the last episode ended and where we are now, some stuff just doesn't make sense. We'll get into it. So first thing I want to address from this episode is Mia Smoke. Oliver's daughter is here in the present, or I guess 2021, right? Because she's looking for William. And the weird thing about this storyline is that it's a continuation of the backdoor pilot of Green Arrow and Canaris, which is a show that the CW did not pick up. So I'm very confused at why they're still kind of doing more with this story unless they were planning to actually try and bring it back again and maybe put on HBO Max. I don't know. But to me, it made no sense to continue this story, which was obviously not going to have any more to do with it because there's nothing else there. There's not going to be a show. There's not going to be a season of TV to explain what happened to William. So I just feel like they kind of shoehorned this in. Besides the whole William thing, I think she's just there as like another counterpoint. And then towards the end of the episode, she kind of has like a Hawkeye moment where she's under the control of the bad guy, Despero and she's attacking people. But like, besides that, I honestly feel like she didn't really need to be in this episode. It didn't really feel like it was very important to the crossover as a whole. The next big thing about this episode is that now the reverse flash is disappearing, similar to how Barry was during reverse flashpoint. And then the whole episode, the team is debating whether they should just let him disappear or try and save him. Now, under normal circumstances, I feel like the hero sparing the villain is a fair story and it's been done many times in many different franchises. So it's not, that part in itself, that's the problem. But to me, it felt weird to do this after, like directly after Reverse Flashpoint where the Reverse Flash literally blew up Barry's life. He killed Child Barry, he killed Joe, he framed Barry to make him look crazy and turned the whole world against him. And then in the next episode, it becomes a whole argument about sparing him because that's the right thing to do? I mean, again, I understand Barry's supposed to be a good person. He's supposed to be the best of us. He's not someone to kill somebody unless he absolutely has to, right? But in this way, it's like, is it really killing if he's already disappearing? And plus the same thing was happening very last episode. And was the reverse flash trying to help him? No, he wanted him to disappear. So to me, it just felt weird to do this right after those specific events. Again, any other time in the season they try to do this, I feel like that would have worked. It also kind of reminded me of back in season five when they found out that Nora was working with the reverse flash and then Iris Noah was kind of defending him and saying, maybe Eobard has changed. Like it's kind of that energy where they're trying to sort of like humanize the reverse flash. But at the same time, it's still the reverse Flash, the worst villain in Barry's Rogue's Gallery, like the most dangerous person. And they're still trying to save him. That all just felt very weird to me. And then even Joe is blowing up at them, at Barry and Iris about their decision. And then at the same time, Chester and Allegra were the one of the first people saying that we should spare him. And then everybody was like, uh, you guys have not been here long enough to know what he's done. You should sit this one out. And I was like, yes, you two have only been here for like a year or two max. So I don't know if you have that much of a say. And I mean, they end up taking their side anyway, but just the whole thought of the situation is just weird. I see what they were going for, but I feel like there was a better way to do it. Now, one thing I will say that I did like about the Reverse Flash storyline in this episode is that we found out why the Reverse Flash hates Barry so much. And it turns out it was as simple as Barry stole the spotlight from him in his time. Like he was gonna make his big debut as a speedster superhero and the Flash came in and saved people instead. And so now everybody saw him as nothing and he was the Flash. And so basically he was jealous that Barry stole the spotlight. So he just became hell bent on revenge ever since. Eobar Thawne is not exactly 100% psychologically, um, how do I put this? Like you can tell he's kind of crazy, but you understand it. And I think that's a cool motivation. And then Barry's like, that's it? That You hold this grudge for that long? And he's like, yes, I wanted your speed. I wanted your life, you know? So it all makes sense. And I love that explanation. And I do hope we get to see more about that, like more of the reverse Flash's origin story because we've still only gotten hints of it now that we're in season eight. We've only gotten hints of it here and there, but I would love to see a reverse Flash episode. I think that would be really cool. All right, and the next big thing about this episode is Despero. He's been a weird villain because in the first few episodes, I feel like they were trying to make him more of an anti-hero. I mean, that's just my interpretation, but it seemed like he was trying to do something wrong, but for the right reasons in a way, because he was trying to save people in the future, right? That's how they kind of presented it to us. 
But then it's like in this last, the last two episodes, they kind of just switched it. Now he's just like full villain trying to kill everybody, right? In the first few episodes, he was a little more nuanced. And I kind of talked about it. Like he seemed like he had more to him. And it seemed like they were going in that direction. But then in the last couple episodes, they just kind of cranked the dial up to super villain, super evil. Now also let's talk about Despero's plan because at first he just wanted to kill Barry because that would fix the timeline and that would save the world from Armageddon. And then when that didn't work, he decided, well, you know what? I'm gonna take out the reverse flash because he's the reason that this happens. But in order to do that, he's willing to just blow up the whole city. So he wants to save the world by killing a bunch of people. And to me, that didn't make sense. It's kind of like Thanos, right? Where like, theoretically what they're talking about is like he wants to stop Armageddon, but the length he's going to do that don't make sense. Same like Thanos, like he wanted to make the population cut in half because then that would mean more resources for people when he could have instead just made more resources for people. But it's like that logic doesn't quite make sense, you know? So to me, I feel like Despero kind of fell off at the end, but I did like the fight scenes with Barry and Despero. Now I will say the CGI did take a little bit of a dip here. I mean, people did talk about it on Twitter, but I feel like a lot of this crossover, and I didn't really talk about it in my other videos, but in this crossover, the CGI I thought was pretty good. But then in this one, I think I went back to a little more of that cartoony stuff. Now there was one part during the fight where I think Barry was like speed attacking him with like his speed mirages and then Despero grabbed him, like smacked him down. And he looked like a rag doll. Like he didn't even look human and it just looked hilarious. But besides that, I mean, it was mostly pretty good. Another big thing about this episode is we finally got the gold boots. So now Barry has his fully comic accurate costume. Now, I do think the way they introduced the boots was a little convoluted. I mean, they could have probably come up with a simpler way, but basically the same technology Barry used to go back in time last episode to fix everything is now in the boots and he used the boots to absorb Despero's energy so he wouldn't blow up the city. I mean, the whole scene was cool, don't get me wrong, but I feel like the explanation could have been a lot simpler for why they just changed his boots from red to gold. There were some other good scenes besides the fight scenes. I did like the scene where Caitlyn was confronting Eobarthon. I thought that was a good scene for them both. There were a couple other stories that they kind of squeezed in here that didn't feel as necessary to me, but they're still there. There's Allegra and Chester's chemistry. They again, kind of hinting at it, but they still didn't quite go there yet. So it just kind of felt weird. And then there's Damien Dark who didn't disappear from the timeline. And it turns out he had to just give away the time stone to um, Joe that like that was his unfinished business. And then what was weird is that he and Nora then switched places because she's supposed to be alive in the timeline, but then she just appears in Star Labs, which makes me wonder, is she still married to Rey in this timeline? Like what happened to all of that? Is she still like the fairy godmother thing? I had so many questions about how she came back and I'm wondering if they're gonna address that. Like, is she still the version that we knew back in Legends or is this a new one because of a different timeline? That part was really confusing for me as someone who watches both Legends and The Flash. I'm hoping they explain it. And the big tease for the end of the episode is that Bart and Nora are coming back and they are messing with the timeline. We see in the trailer that certain people are coming back. I'm not gonna spoil it if you didn't watch the trailer, but I am excited for that. So that's it, Armageddon has come to a close. If you want me to keep making videos about The Flash season eight starting next year, like this video. Also subscribe to the channel so you know when I post those videos. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.